right, good morning, hippos. Hope everybody's having a great start to their day. Bright and early over here. We're going to be diving into a Bitcoin update and taking a look at some. I actually want to do something a little bit different in this video here, which is go back and look at the signals that are being delivered in real time now versus how they play out in this run that we've been in. So we've acknowledged that we've been in a four hour trend all the way up until this point and that we were trying to push into a daily trend. And so we're going to use time frames as we go down into time frame fractals, basically, and we look at multiples of four on what those signals are really telling us in real time. I think this is something that a lot of people don't really realize to do because the thing is, is that we've been tracking yesterday's video. We were tracking the one hour divergence to see if that could play out. We needed to close above 9,600. It failed to do that. It was, it found 9,600 as resistance, getting this confirmation of a move to the downside. But how, how do we read the signals in real time compared to how they actually play out in this trend too? Because the reality is, is that everything is still higher lows in, you know what I mean, um, in regards to this whole entire move up. The only time that we've started to shift now is right here. So this is a prime time to really take into consideration what is happening with our signals in regards to in regards to a reversal um so is this is this how a top is kind of formed in order to put us down towards the bottom because the way that i'm seeing this right now is that this is still 100 percent criteria for a flat right so we don't have technically some sort of an impulse or a very strong signal in my opinion especially since we're working on a four hour time frame that says that we're dealing with a four hour correction just yet Okay, everything so far is still an internal correction to just this small move right here. And when we zoom out and look at that, we can see just how minute that really is in regards to this big run up that we've really been having. Okay, so I want to go back and I've already highlighted them for us as well to show that, hey, we're getting signals on the 15 minute, on the one hour, on the four hour. What do those signals mean and how do we know when to actually pull the trigger and play on them? Because just because we were tracking the one hour here, right? We needed that confirmation to actually, to have that actually play out. And so there's a difference between trying to catch an absolute bottom and then also knowing when to get out of your trade if you don't see the right reaction. So in regards to like this move here, we might be seeing a 15 minute divergence and that allows us a 1%, one and a half to 3% swing. Well, if the EMAs are below us, how does that, how does that differentiate from if we were above the EMAs? Because as you pair the two indicators together, RSI and the composite index, they're leading indicators. They use smaller numbers, okay, smaller numbers like the 14 period, and then the smaller EMAs on the composite here to give us quicker readings so that we can try and project the future. The RSI allows us to identify a range. So these two are both strength indicators, and you don't normally ever use two of the same indicators together, but I use them for two different reasons. The RSI is a range indicator. It varies between one, zero, 0 and 100. And so when we're in a bullish range and when we're in a bearish range, that's what the RSIs are telling me. The composite index, because it has a momentum indicator attached to it, gives me better signals for divergences and false divergences that the RSI might be giving me. So it's a better divergence reader okay then the rsi is so i don't use the rsi for divergence we use the composite index for divergence and we use the rsi for ranges okay now i'll still look at divergences on the rsi just to compare them with composite as i'm still doing data testing and collecting for it but for the most part that's we use them for two separate reasons and then the emas they're lagging indicators and they're lagging indicators because they take a much bigger period in time and so they're telling us a trend okay so they're a trend lagging indicator and so if we get a signal on these that is telling us the future and we're above the trend lines on, on the ema we're above those then we have really strong signals. When we're below them, we're looking for the opposite, right? For that reversal. So let's just go back in time here real quick. And you know, even now we still have divergences that are printing. We're just needing to see the right reaction. We need to see confirmation and a push to the upside. Because if we do get that, well then we actually have a really bigger move that we can take advantage of. And so it's not like we have to catch the absolute bottom right here, right? We're just watching for the signal and then waiting for the confirmation on it as well. And then, having a fast trigger to pull that trigger and you know put our stop loss in the right places, which is another problem that people run into too, is that like when the EMAs cross over, people see that as a bearish or a bullish signal, right? Well, okay, well, cool, you're gonna take a trade, 
Do you know how much gain to expect? Do you know where to put your stop loss based off of that strategy? Do you know how to exit that strategy? Okay, just because there's a buy signal for it doesn't mean that that's something to just jump into. You've got to have the whole formula. So in this video here, I'm going to go back and I want to just talk about divergences, timeframes, and the EMAs. Okay, so first and foremost, you can see the EMAs right now <coughs> crossing. Okay, the 200, we've got the orange in 50, the blue in 21, and the green is the 8. Okay, so, um, sorry, 34 on the orange one. Okay, so we've got these red ones coming all across here, and we can even change this up. Let's just go to a 50 here real quick on it and see how that changes the signal as well. Okay, so you can see that we've on the 200, we've already crossed these. So even if you're using a 50, technically the red hasn't even crossed all of these to even give a sell signal yet. Okay, right. But because the lagging indicator, it's something with EMAs, you're going to have to project in the future. Do you expect this to roll over further? Right. So if we go back and we look at every time, I'm going to change that back to a 34 because what I've plotted out the data for. But let's just go back to every time that this right here has occurred. And I've marked it with red vertical lines. And we can see what happens with price in the purple boxes. Okay. So in this case here, if we're just going based off of an EMA signal, we can see that we basically just consolidated sideways. And the reason being is because we're on a four hour uptrend, right? So corrections are gonna be prevalent on the 15 minute and on the one hour. That's where we're gonna see what we think are reversal signals and that's gonna be your noise, your false signals. It's really just corrections, okay? So this is how we get better with timeframes too. Here again, we crossed over the 200 over all of these here and purple box we just i mean look at where that signal would have put you on price and the height of the purple box is where you probably at the very best you probably would have entered in at okay so same with this one here we cross here so we short here okay we came out came back down and under all of this we would have just sat in the red in the positive for i guess you could say but what's important is like what's the average what's the average gain of that you know take the take and measure it down write these things down to track your strategies so if you're Looking at that as your crossover, we get seven and a half percent drop. Okay, um, this one over here. Okay, six point four. This one here, God, I don't even know if that would have counted. <laughs> Three percent though. Um, you know this move here, and take these, add them all up, and get and get the average. It's what I did when I was looking at RSI divergences on each time frame. It's why I know what I can expect from a 15 minute divergence if I'm above the EMAs, what I can expect from a 15 minute divergence if I'm below the EMAs, okay? And same with the one hour, the four hour, and always keeping within the same time frame as well. So with that being said, uh, let's grab this uh, one as well here, and we've got another 7%. So when those cross over, we typically tend to consolidate more sideways within about, on average, what would you say? Maybe, I mean, we can add these up, but I'm not going to. So uh, right about what we got, seven, 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 three and a two. Okay, so these two right here would have been probably bad signals. You would have lost on those two, would have been, would have gained on three, three out of the five. Okay, so you've got about a, what is that, a 70% you know success rate if you get good with this signal and you take every single one right if you don't take every single one let's say now you want to check time because if you're in bed and you're sleeping during this signal and you know what i mean and you're in bed during this signal then and you take the other three well now you have a horrible risk reward ratio right on, on your wins so it's good to track these things when you're developing your strategy and putting that all together you guys um so that's what the EMAs are doing. Well, you want to pair two things together with strategies, right? So we've got the EMAs telling us a trend and we have those flipping, but they're a lagging indicator. So if we can pair a lagging indicator up with a leading indicator, we can start to strengthen a little bit more. Okay. And so now if we go down here and we take a look at every time price moved uh, when those EMAs flipped, what are we seeing from the RSI? And so in this case here, we're on the one hour still. And yet you got to do this for multiple time frames because you're going to strengthen it that way. Because if you recognize that you're on a four hour trend, then you're going to use the 15 minute and the one hour to actually try and pick these bottoms for corrections, right? Because the reality is, is every single one of these that we, where the EMA is crossed, one, two, three, four, five, they're all on the bottoms, okay? You basically pick the bottoms 
okay, if you bought. Well, and that's what we're doing right here too, right? This is a, a, a cross, just like these are crossing if you were to go off at just that signal alone. So now we want to accompany that with the RSI as well, okay? And so, and that's just in this trend, right? The data would be different if we go back and we look at what it's doing in a downtrend, okay? And the same exact type of strategy uh, reversed basically, okay? But we're just grabbing the data points for this run and this trend here because the trend is our friend until the end, right? And so if we're looking for buy opportunities, technically this would be more of a buy signal or at least a signal of it bottoming for a correction before further uptrend because that's what we've seen from every single one of these other ones. So now let's pair it with RSI and see if we can find a similar signal to strengthen each one of these areas here. So this move here, <clears throat> and we're gonna compare it with composite index too, okay? RSI we're going to use as range, composite index we're going to use for divergence. So this move here, okay, we've got, so basically the big drop before these crossed is a signal that the EMA is going to cross. We get one big drop first, right? And so now we've got a divergence here forming on the RSI for the one hour. And we have confirmation of that on the composite index. And right as we are pulling back for that divergence, as we make a new low on price, we also are having the EMAs on the composite index cross right there, okay? So let's go back and look at the other ones here. All right, so in this case here, I'm gonna kind of move this off to the right there. All right, so we've got no divergence here because price makes a higher high or higher low. Okay, so we don't have divergence there, but do we have a divergence from the drop prior to them crossing? So that would be these two right here. And that would be this guy and this one here. So it's basically a double bottom, but it technically this one made a lower low. Okay, so the one hour didn't necessarily give a signal, but look at the composite index, okay? Better divergence. Okay, so the composite index confirming that we've got a divergence right there, RSI is not, okay? It's more of like a double bottom, but this actually breaks down a little bit of a low there, uh, 24.18, and we had a low here of 26.09, so almost two difference on RSI there, okay? So one thing that we wanna take a look at here on the confirmation now is that RSI is best for range, right? So if we take a horizontal line and we know that 40 is basically the sweet spot, Okay, but we don't wanna just say that 40 is the sweet spot because every time frame is gonna be slightly different. Sometimes it's 47, sometimes it's 37. Okay, it's you wanna figure out what the signal is telling you the best in regards to this trend here. So if we kind of just zoom out here and we recognize on a one hour time frame, where is the best spot for every time we pulled back into a correction, okay, and we kicked off. Okay, so look at that range right there. We got this guy here, there is a little bit lower. So as long as we're above 30 and above 40, both are, are really good signals right there. What about coming over here? So boom, we lost it right there. So when we dropped down underneath like this, we had to move back up, but it was signaling that we were gonna have another low. Okay, so because of that, this almost lost the, the, the trend altogether. You can see that right there. We actually got into a one hour bearish kind of trend right there because we were hitting this bottom so many times right there. So, and it resulted in lower lows. So once we finally had that divergence between here and here, that was a good signal that we're kicking back up into the range. But look, when we really got back up into the run again, look at where we found that support at, okay? We were back up into that 40 again, okay? So right here is like really key, good levels. Here, here, all of that, this guy here, Okay, so even right here and here, we're starting to lose it now. We lost it, came down to 30 right there, which signifies one more low, okay? Same with this guy here. We dropped underneath that 40, signal, signaled one more low, okay? We, that would have been paired with this one and this one here, okay? So piecing this together, as we look at these signals, right? Here we are, and we're back down under that 30 right now move this to the right a little bit, we're, we're at that 30, which signals that we had this move here, signals one more low. So that would match up with the pattern that we've been making basically. So this would also support, given this bottom here and then one more low, that this would actually be technically a buy opportunity again, 
for right down in this range here, okay? So, and then we use, we pair this up with Elliott Wave to get our projections, okay? So if we have these signals that are being given to us, and then we look at this and we say, okay, we've got a flat correction here, or maybe you think this is gonna be an impulse and it's gonna go down deeper. So you're looking for maybe a 1.382, 1.236, right? All of those, once accompanied with the right signals too, and then you get the confirmation by it actually moving, gives you a lot of confidence that you can actually take that trade. And some of us even jump in early with minimizing our risk, right, with smaller positions, and then we wait for the confirmation. If we get confirmation, we add to it. If we don't, we exit the position, okay? Um, so, but let's go back. Sorry for getting off there a little bit, but coming back here to the divergences again, all right? And we have the composite index still telling us the divergence. Notice that the divergences are coming before the lagging indicator is, okay? So in other words, this is telling us that we have a bottom before the EMAs are, okay? So come back over this way here, here's our signal, EMAs are crossing, what is the RSI doing? Okay, a little bit of support at 30, and we don't have any divergence on the RSI right here, okay, between these two but we do on the composite, okay? Notice the point here is equal to that point there, it drops lower. So again, the composite giving us a better signal, okay, as to this divergence right here, okay? And on one hour, when we see those divergences, you might as well just measure too, what can we expect in the short term and also in, in date and time. So if we get this signal here, how patient do we need to be now? Okay, so we've got a signal, and each one of these took probably, let's see here, a date range. So if we, you know, if we'd shorted or if we'd gone long, how long would we have to wait, right, before we actually start kicking back up, okay? That one's four days. This one here is about a day and a quarter. Okay, go back here. We've got ourselves a day and seven hours, I don't know, maybe three, four, five hours there, okay? And those are our signals, okay? Notice too that these signals, how often do they come, right? We have had five signals in what we're measuring here, okay? Since the start of this run up from the very bottom, to this top so far, we've had 65 days, okay? Basically, 65 days and we've had five signals. So we get a signal every 10 days. It really helps you so that you don't overtrade if you know how often to kind of expect your signals too. If you're trying to, you know, and scalping is gonna be completely different than one hour or four hour trend and so forth. So you're gonna develop different strategies over time. What's key is doing all of these components to actually perfect your strategies and get really good at them and then have clear expectations for them as well. Okay, so let's go finish off the divergences on these other ones here. <clears throat> okay, so our EMAs cross here. We determined we had a divergence on the composite again, not the RSI though, for this low right here. Okay, the price was higher low here, but if we go all the way over here even, after the EMAs crossed, so after the EMAs crossed, we can take this low and we created divergence right here okay what did that play out for price wise you know is something that you want you want to look at right we can see here that that played out for five percent so a one hour divergence as we had emas cross to the bearish side played out to a five percent move to the upside okay and these are things that, this is the data that you're writing down you're tracking for your strategy so that you have a clear expectation. Hey, on average, these trades take about, I don't know, three days, okay, to bottom out, or less than that really, what we got five hours, a day, a day, four days, and we didn't do that one, let's do that one. And by, by the time, we got to think if we catch the very bottom, you know, right when the signal is given, we take it. 
this is how long we have to wait for it to get back above that price if we're going long here. If you're short, you would be doing the different uh, different data, right? You'd be saying, is this a good short trade to take and what can I expect for my playouts in that case? So this move here, um, we're looking at this as like catching a bottom. Like, is this a good strategy for catching a bottom and what, what do we do, you know, in regards to move to the upside? And the reason that we're looking at it that way is because four hour trend is upwards. So we're looking at this as more of a correction. And how are we going to be able to tell and identify a buy signal to the upside if this is a correction? OK. And once you know what to expect, if that doesn't play out and you, your signals fail, then you know that it's flipping to the south side. OK. Or that there's no buy there or that you were wrong. So this one here was two days. So on average, we're looking at like a day and a half. OK, so a day and a half for this to actually play out gives you perspective that's like, hey, I'm going to have to have an overnight trade if I take a signal right here. Vice versa, if I wait for some more confirmations over the next day and a half, I might be able to take a better, stronger signal rather than reacting to the very first one or two things that I see. OK, so um, divergence on these last two here. And then we're going to go and we're going to compare it to the RSI range that we've established by looking at the range on RSI. So this move right before the drop, right before the EMAs cross, it, it tends to be a typical characteristic of the signal. We get a pretty decent drop. We could even go back and measure every one of those drops, too, to see how on average, how much do we fall. OK, and we would measure this out. We can see that divergence. Notice that we get three on this one, too. And we had three over here as well. OK, so. And the divergence, RSI even gives the divergence on it all. And so does the composite index. Okay. So. And this last one here. We've got, this would be our divergence on price. But does the RSI slightly supports it? Composite shows it a little bit better. Notice after the divergence, the EMAs crossed. Okay, after the divergence, EMAs crossed. Okay, so that's going to be another thing that we pair with the divergence on the composite index. Is okay, we get a divergence. We also want the EMAs to cross. So this one here, we had divergence, EMAs crossed a little bit later. Again, EMAs are a lagging indicator, so they're going to have a longer period to them. OK, and then this move all over here had that divergence, no divergence between this one and this one. So composite is signaling that we're still down. So this signal here and here, though, so the divergence is really going to be from these two here. And after that, the divergence, Do we, when do we get the EMA cross? Oh, and notice that, too, that so. We had a divergence here on the composite as well. And so when we measure these two, this is good for some people to know, everyone to know really, but if this is the bottom of price and you're comparing it with this one here, you need to skip over this one. Notice I drew my line right through it. I'm comparing this bottom here and this bottom here for my divergence. This one and this one, I'm comparing for divergences as well. Okay, so just to, narrow in this five wave move right here. So this is a third and a fifth most likely. And then you've got divergence here and here giving you the pivot to the upside. Okay, so, and then what do you see right after that? Boom, EMAs cross. Okay, so divergence, EMAs cross and composite index. Okay, now confirmation is on the RSI for the range. The range is gonna be um, like a, confirmation indicator okay so it's going to confirm that you're holding the trend you want to hold that bullish support for kickoff and continuation so every time if this is our signal for buy signals and that we're bottoming then we need confirmation that we're going to continue continue moving even higher okay that confirmation is every time we move we have our signals here we move back and we pull back to bullish support Okay, and then we stay above that 40 range. Notice right here, okay, all above that 40 range. Okay, so when we come over here, let's see again, 40 range, 40 range, 40 range. So once we lost that right here, okay, but that's gonna be a whole different strategy altogether because now we're talking about tops. We're just gonna focus on the bottoms here. So 
Um, coming back over to this way here, uh, EMA is crossed. We, we've noticed all that. So now that it's just the RSI ranges. So every time we get that signal and we come back and we get a move up and, and, and back down, we want to see that RSI. So this move here, come up, we want to find it as support. If that 40 is always acting as support for us, it allows us to continue that trend up. But anytime we lose that 40 on the one hour, it's signaling that we're going to have a move up, so technically we have a buy signal, it's gonna be a smaller buy signal though. Okay, you're gonna have a lower expectation as to the move up because you're getting a reversal, and then we get another low, that's the bigger move to the upside. So you wait for two of them now on the RSI range when on the one hour. And this is something that we have to go and we have to do for the 15 minute as well to see with the same exact signals, we go into the 15 minute time frame and we say, okay, what is happening now in the 15 minute time frame, and how can I use the two time frames together to give me a more accurate signal? And that's the power of time frames. Very, very powerful stuff. We're not going to do that in this video on the 15 minute. I just wanted to walk through technically the one hour and what the previous signals to this trend have told us. And so until this, you know, fails, so to speak, what we can expect when these cross here is on average, we get about a, what was it, a 5%, 7% drop. And consolidation. So I would expect something like this from this point forward. I'd expect boom, 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 boom. Uh, you know, and then another kickoff to the upside, so long as we get the divergences and the other supporting indicators to it. So this is technically what we see when we are establishing bottoms in this trend. So and until we lose that, that's technically a strategy that we've gone over here that we can use to try and pick a bottom. And so now you have a very clear, it doesn't mean that you buy right now. It means that we have very clear expectations as to what we're looking for in order to tell us that we have our bottom in. So we're patient. We just let, let price kind of play out. We know that after the EMAs cross, we have about a day and a half on average, as high as four days, but even then we saw a move to the upside. So about on average a day and a half, Okay, to kind of see where price is going to go. It calms your emotions. It tells you that you don't have to take a trade instantaneously. And this is for a strategy just for a bigger move, right? We're not looking at trying to scalp this stuff down here. If we wanted to do that, we would be on a five and a 15 minute and we'd be developing a completely different strategy for this price action and trend in here. I'd like to do more videos like this. So let me know down in the comments below if this, if you like this type of content, if you want me to go over more stuff like this to where we can develop different strategies together and, you know, and, and read indicators differently and how to pair them up with Elliott Wave as well and Fibonacci extensions and retracements to develop targets, entries, and stop losses. All right, much love, hippos. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in the next one.